then this spring, it could end up being about 200, actually. Oh, 200 students? Yeah, yeah this okay. spring. This but spring. in the past, you have also uh, taught uh, Indonesian students, right? Oh, I still I have Indonesian students even now. Even classes. now. And, yeah, they are absolutely. Uh, they are learning to become a mechanical, mechanical engineer. That's, that's right? correct. They're getting a mechanical okay. engineering degree. Let me ask you, you know, with those Indonesian students, mm -hmm. um, um, what is their dilemma? Um, because I heard that uh, many of them do not want to go back or maybe um, kind of hesitant to go back. <laughs> um, it, it, it's not that they're hesitant uh, to go back. Uh, and it's not that they don't have desires to go back. I think their first choice is to go back. Um, the dilemma that they face is what are they going back to? Um, so at least the students that I'm teaching, uh, I mean at UC Berkeley, it's you know, uh, it prides itself on being the number one public, you know, institution, uh, higher education institution in the world, uh, and I believe that they are, uh, these students are exposed to cutting-edge technology education. I mean, in, in the Indonesian students that I've had, you know, they don't get any specialist treatment being here, and they stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with most students in my class. You know, some of them uh, do actually very, very well. So they have the ability to compete at an international level, uh, I believe, from a, uh, as an engineer. But the only thing is, a lot of times, uh, once they get to the level where it's towards graduation, they'll either come to me uh, and we sort of chat uh, and so forth. And, I mean, not in some sense, it's sort of uh, jokingly, uh, I mean, I know that they're faced with a dilemma. I'll always sort of, you know, say, oh, so what are you going to do when you go back home? And then they have an they have an issue. And they have an issue there is that in that they don't feel that they have for the caliber of education they've gotten that they have the proper or enough of an opportunity, especially for mechanical engineers. You th you're talking about opportunities in Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, opportunities in Indonesia. In Indonesia, okay. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. And um, um, what else is it has to do with maybe the salary, the infrastructure, or the industry itself? Or yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I think the students know of situations back home more than I do, uh, and I think these are a combination of things. Most likely, yeah, maybe the infrastructure is not there. Uh, I mean, obviously, the the job opportunities are not there. A lot of times, uh, most that I've talked to always point to the fact that uh, if they go into the Petroleum industry, that's where the highest paid engineers are. And, and how much are they, uh, um, what did they say? Yeah, so, so what they tell me is that they can, they can go into the petrochemical industry, uh, they can do that, but then they end up um, making what's equivalent to 500 US dollars uh, per month. Um, and this was talking to a student that was maybe yeah, about a year ago. Uh, you know, I don't know if it has changed. And, much and, and in, in the U.S., would uh, well, what the, would be the comparable salary? Well, in, in the US? It, well, in the U.S., in the U.S., starting, I mean, starting a bachelor degree, you know, U.S. starting is anywhere from, you know, nowadays is anywhere from four to six thousand dollars a month. So it's easily tenfold, and that's, I mean, that's a, <laughs> a tough thing to pull away from when they know. They can stand toe to toe with their colleagues, and their friends are getting jobs at these offers, right? And so they're 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 stuck. And unfortunately, because of their foreign status uh, and them as a student visa, they they're not allowed to work here. It's a lot more difficult at an undergraduate level to get work. So they they they're really caught in a dilemma. They've invested huge amount of money <laughs> in their standard to get this excellent education. And then, unfortunately, they're almost nowhere to go. Okay. So, most of the people, or the students that uh, you have met, mm. um, have they finished their graduate degree or they stay at the... No. No. So, so most of the students, most uh, of the students that, that I've been exposed to, uh, I mean, I don't necessarily know... Uh, 
uh, all of their grades and how well they do their other class, but they do very well in my class. Um, and I know that, uh, you know, most of them um, can actually make it to graduate school somewhere. I mean, somewhere in the, t easily they'll be able to make it in, if it's not in Berkeley, uh, in any of the top 10 schools in the U.S., they'll probably be able to be accepted as a graduate school to get at least a master's degree. I mean, some of them will go on, but most of them don't, uh, mainly because most of the students that I am seeing now, uh, their rationale is that their parents can't afford them, you know, afford to pay the tuition for another year or so. Uh, and needless to say, you know, if they're going to pursue a PhD, it will be very difficult to do that. And then a lot of times I'll advise them that if they do well and their parents can squeeze one more year, a lot of times here, if you get into the PhD program, uh, you'll end up, and then this may be something that most people do not know, even though the PhD can be four, five, seven years and so forth. That first one or two years, if you get into a research program, the research program will actually pay for it in most institutions, and then you end up, you know, you get your tuition waived. So it's really that extra two years worth of investment if they can pull it off, then all of a sudden they'll get a graduate degree. And then with a graduate degree, they, they have a lot more opportunities. Uh, I mean, that I think becomes not necessarily uh, a guarantee, but it becomes easier, depending on their specialization, for them to be able to get a job. Companies are a little bit more willing to sponsor them. To okay, work so here. you are talking about U.S. company, not Indonesia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Sorry, so, sorry. So the sorry, opportunities... Yeah. Are, um, are much better if one has um, a graduate degree oh, yeah. than so. um, uh, if it's just a bachelor yeah, degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a graduate I, degree, and then they have the opportunity to do research or have the opportunity to think outside the box. I think they will tend to be um, more uh, entrepreneurialistic towards Indonesia. I think they might be able to see more opportunities and create opportunities for themselves. Not necessarily at a bachelor's level, uh, but at a graduate level, you know, through their networking that are here, exposing to the students there. I mean, here, especially here, like in the Bay Area, I mean, the, you know, Silicon Valley is just full of startups. Once you're in graduate school, that's, that's, that's every graduate student's dream, okay, is to become the next Steve Jobs, I mean, to start the next Apple. And I think, like, personally, to me, I would think that there's more opportunities to do that in Indonesia if the infrastructure is right I see. than it is here. Yeah, so you have students come from Korea, uh, oh, yeah. from China, oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, are they are, are they when they graduate? Do they want to live here in the U.S. or most of them actually go back to their country? Um, no, I think initially most of them also want to work here, uh, but I think they have strong mindsets of going back home. Uh, I mean, those places are a little bit different. I mean, Korea, <laughs> I mean, a lot of times with Korea students, I think, I think Korea itself has even better opportunities uh, than in the U.S. I mean, there are American students that go to Korea after they graduate to work. And now there are American students that will go to China <laughs> to work. I mean, that's how the opportunities are. I mean, there are. I mean, I think there are a lot of American engineers that are making a much better living contributing in China because the infrastructure is there. I mean, it's booming in China. So, what's missing in Indonesia? Oh, that, I, I don't know. That, well, is that, it, that, is that, it, that hopefully you can well, tell well, well, what's missing is, is it the, the salary, the infrastructure, the... Uh, I mean, I, 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 I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure. I, I don't really know. I, I mean, you know, unfortunately, I, I've lived most of my life here. I mean, my heart is, of course, back home and all I see is I don't understand why. Indonesia has abundance of natural resources. Uh, these natural resources, uh, you know, engineers can take opportunities to, you know, do good with these natural resources. I mean, it, you know, I mean Indonesia is not like any other company, uh, any company, any other country that doesn't have natural resources. I mean, they, they have huge abundance of natural resources uh, and, and I think Personally, I think there, there are many avenues in Indonesia, uh, you know, at least it seems like it is very, very diverse, you know, and diversity uh, 
bring about opportunities uh, to modernize. Uh, I'm not saying that all modernization is good, but I mean to be compete globally nowadays. I mean you you pretty much have to modernize. I mean even China is modernizing. I mean, China has okay. you know automated facilities. And mm -hmm. It's not all just labor dependent. I mean they make semiconductors and you can't do semiconductors without automation, without technology. I mean it's the cutting edge technology. Singapore does it. Malaysia does it. 